Hey, John. Hi, how? Shweta. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. It's good to be here. Yeah. How, how is your session? How are your sessions going in Cisco Live? Oh, uh, they went really well. Uh, there were definitely some hard questions from the audience, and uh, it was great to be able to connect and actually give answers. So, can you tell us more about what new APIs are coming into Meraki recently? Yeah. So, um, let's start with Dashboard API. Uh, you know, that's our general purpose. Mm -hmm inbound API where you know you ask us for some information or you ask us to do something and then we execute. Um, this is a REST API. Uh, we've seen just phenomenal adoption for uh, the dashboard API. Um, in the first quarter of this fiscal year, we had uh, 500 different customers grow their API, their dashboard API consumption 100x or more. Wow. And then in Q2 that actually doubled. We had a thousand different customers grow their API consumption 100x or more. And we're just thrilled. We're just thrilled to see that mm -hmm. the product is actually resonating with customers. Um, and customers are really realizing value from mm -hmm. APIs. Yeah. Um, you know, a, the core value proposition of APIs is really twofold, right? Uh, one, it helps you make better data-driven business decisions, right? And then second, it helps you actually act on those decisions mm -hmm. quickly, efficiently, helps you experiment uh, uh, in a way that doesn't you know, require too many resources. Um, and of course, always helps you do more with less, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So uh, as more customers are learning all the different ways that they can actually leverage our APIs to realize value, we've seen just incredible adoption. Mm -hmm. And um, what, what is the experience of the customer once they go on to this journey of API adoption? Like, mm -hmm. do they come back or do they, you know, how is the retention policy of those customers which you have seen, uh, the ones who adopt APIs right. more? Well, um, curiosity about APIs, of course, can you know, come to a customer of almost any size, right? I mean, uh, uh, a single network admin might be uh, experimenting with APIs mostly because he feels like he is uh, overworked mm -hmm. or um, un maybe his department is undermanned, right? I mean, everyone's facing staffing challenges right now. Um, so there's a lot of people in this, uh, in this boat. But when you have enough work for six or seven people and you think about how can one person actually do it, APIs become a pretty natural part of that uh, equation. So we do see usage across uh, you know, smaller accounts, um, and deployments that are you know, only a couple dozen devices mm -hmm. maybe, uh, or even smaller. Um, and it's usually those types of network admins who are trying to do more with less yeah. so that they can focus on the other things that they need to mm -hmm. get done rather than you know, click around in a, in a GUI. Um, and we're thrilled about that. Um, but the bigger customers, uh, you know, there's a certain point at which uh, it becomes really uh, cost effective to develop some software to use APIs rather than hire another network admin, right? So if, uh, if you're thinking about how you're going to spend your dollars um, and uh, you have the ability to either work with an ecosystem partner who's developed an application that mm -hmm. can do some of these things for you, um, or you, can, you have a software development team by chance uh, and they can actually do the API development, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty common to be able to realize more ROI uh, investing in the software development, whether that's, again, external or internal, than to hire just another uh, network admin, right? right. Um, so when customers get to that level, uh, then it very quickly becomes an indispensable tool mm -hmm. because once they once they go from you know needing uh, you know needing six weeks to do a deployment to six days, no one is ever going to be able to make an argument for going back to the old way of doing things, right? Uh, so to that effect, when we see adoption of the API, um, the people who make uh, just one API call every month and the people who make uh, well, there's not that many, honestly, right? Mm -hmm. If you use the API at all. Uh, you're almost always going to be making at least thousands of API calls every month. Yeah. Uh, it's very uncommon for someone to use it less. So mm -hmm. um, even, for those, even for those few network admins who are kind of doing it independently, it very quickly becomes a bigger part of the business mm -hmm. as the uh, business managers and decision makers learn that that's how things are actually staying yeah. put together with only one person behind mm -hmm. the helm. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, no, we're really thrilled. So I saw you with a bunch of flashcards with, which were having all API yeah, updates. Yeah, a whole deck. It was, it was yeah. like a stack this big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, give us your top 10 new API endpoints. 10, okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. So number one, I think my favorite uh, on the dashboard API side mm -hmm. is the network topology endpoint. Um, this is an endpoint that takes all the LODP, CDP information, all the discovery info that we have for a given network, and then puts it in a single endpoint, mm -hmm. right? So in the past, you've been able to gather that information on a, a per device basis, right? So you could ask this switch, what does this one switch see, right? Um, what does this other AP see, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and that, 
is actually quite a bit of work, right? I mean, a network might have thousands of devices in it, and so if you end up querying a thousand devices, two thousand devices, now you have to build a map outside of that. This does all that work for you in a single API call. However many devices you have in the network, we're going to put all that CDP and LLDP information into a single call. And we're going to organize it in a way that's very human readable, mm -hmm. right? You don't have to be uh, you know, an expert application developer. You don't have to be an LLDP or CDP guru, uh, CCIE level, you know, to interpret the actual um, output. Uh, in fact, technical project managers who might be running deployments, um, and they might be concerned, for example, with did everything get deployed correctly, right? Even a technical product uh, project manager, right, mm -hmm. should be able to interpret the list and understand this is how the network's been connected. Uh, which really speaks to what Meraki's trying to do with APIs in general, right? Um, demystify APIs, demystify network administration mm -hmm. so, that, uh, so that you can get things done more quickly mm -hmm. and easily. I would say that's probably, uh, that's probably number one. Number one. Um, now, for dashboard API, there's, enough, there's, there's so many developments, um, but we're also taking information that, like, like with LLDP and, and CDP information, we're also taking information about things like switch ports, right? Mm -hmm. And that previously was a per device endpoint. Now, that still is available, but um, we're taking that and moving that to the organization level, mm -hmm. right? So this is available today as well. If you go and grab the switch port configs, you might be doing this for a, a posture enforcement uh, purpose or maybe configuration backup, you know, whatever your use case. If you have uh, hundreds of switches, right, then doing it on a per switch basis is a little bit onerous. Yeah. Um, so with this one endpoint, you can get the configs across your organization of switches, right? And we organize those based on the switch, mm -hmm. um, making it much, much faster. In fact, in real world testing, it was an 87% increase for large organizations, mm -hmm. right? Now, a small organization, you might not see as much of a, a benefit, yeah. but we're really targeting a lot of these ease of use developments on uh, really the hardest problems, mm -hmm. right? Um, the fact is that if you solve it for the hardest, uh, if you solve the hardest problems for the biggest customers, a lot of that really does trickle down into the day-to-day. -day. Right. Um, and honestly, any customer that we have, we want to grow into a much bigger customer, right? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, it's good for our business, but it also means that our customers are succeeding. So, uh, you know, with that in mind, we want to make sure that the, the way is paved for that growth to be uh, organic, scalable, mm -hmm. um, and intuitive. Yeah. So, um, you know, I know that webhook payload templates are some mm -hmm. of the latest things which everyone is talking about. We yeah, had a few yeah. workshops um, around those things. So yes, can you tell yes, us a bit yes. about Corey's that? Yes, Corey's been leading the Corey's been leading workshops. Yeah, webhook payload templates. Um, so when you are developing with webhooks, I, well, what's the difference between a webhook and a, and a, and a dashboard mm -hmm. API? Well, dashboard API is, again, our inbound service, right? Where you tell us you want a piece of information, you want to make a change, and then we execute. We take that request and then we send you the information back. We confirm that it was successful or, or tell you that you know, uh, this VLAN is not mm -hmm. valid, that kind of thing. Uh, well, with webhooks, that's, uh, that's where we tell you right, when something about your network has exceeded normal operating conditions, mm -hmm. right? And those thresholds, uh, there's many thresholds that are configurable uh, for those webhooks. Um, you have, of course, on the MI side, a ton of metrics about your WAN links, latency, loss, uh, QoS, that sort of thing that you can alert on in real time. Mm -hmm. So, uh, super, super valuable, right? Um, then from the MT side, our new IoT sensors, mm -hmm. um, if a temperature sensor goes you know, one degree above what mm -hmm. it's supposed to be, you'll get that alert in real mm -hmm. time, right? So if you're managing anything that's temperature sensitive or from a physical security perspective, doors opening and closing, yeah. right? Um, letting you know very, very quickly that that has happened um, uh, is uh, really one of the core value propositions of sending things via webhook, mm -hmm. right? Now, the problem with webhooks, right, is uh, not a Meraki specific problem by any means, right? More and more uh, vendors, uh, Cisco of course, but others, are able to ingest events via webhook. Uh, and we're thrilled to see that. I mean, it really is emerging as a standard. Mm -hmm. But the problem with webhooks in general, as they're implemented uh, across the industry, is that most vendors have their own bespoke template for uh, webhooks. And it means that you have to structure the data in a very specific way mm -hmm. for that application to know what to do with it. Um, and unfortunately, there's not too many applications that are the same, right? Um, so we have some great ecosystem partners that have adopted the Meraki specific template. Um, folks like Datadog who are able to use it as is. Mm -hmm. um, but when we look at some of the other um, folks um, in our broader ecosystem, uh, they have specific requirements for how that data is structured. So with custom webhook templates, 
we let the customer tell us how we need to format the data so that they don't have to build any sort of Nginx proxy middleware to remap the fields, right? They tell us how to structure the webhook and then we can then send it directly to Splunk or uh, WebEx or Microsoft Teams, mm -hmm. right? Whatever application needs a specific format for that data. Uh, and then there's no middleware, right? Mm -hmm. It's a direct cloud to cloud integration. So you can get that information integrated with your Meraki platform and your other platforms very, very seamlessly and easily. Um, and we built, the, we built them as custom templates because it's just so much, it's much more scalable, right? Mm -hmm. Give customers the ability to tell us what it looks like, right? What, what they need. Um, and then we have a tool that really works uh, for mo more customers than if we tried to build all these templates mm -hmm. uh, ourselves, right? So we're really, we're really thrilled to see the adoption. It's made webhooks, it's taken webhooks from here to here, uh, and we just love to see the, uh, the ways that it's making uh, Real-time monitoring use case is much more feasible and practical, yeah. as well as cloud native, mm -hmm. which we're always looking for. So um, let's say if people are interested in exploring more of these use cases, so where do they, where, where should they go and where should they start off? With? Absolutely, well we have a great documentation site. Um, one of the things that we're really proud of uh, and is actually fairly unique for the cloud networking industry uh, is that we publish all of our API documentation publicly, right? You don't need to have a license, you don't need to have any hardware, you don't need to pay anything or even have an account. You can go and read the docs. So I would say go to meraki.io and look at our documentation. You can see, you know, for example, dashboard API webhooks. You'll see examples of the templates. Um, our dashboard API website has, uh, an, in the browser, uh, you can actually make API requests and test things out right there without a different, you, you can do it in Postman, of course, right? You can download our Postman collection and use it there if you're comfortable, but you don't even need that. You can just do it right in the browser. So if you really have never used APIs before, you can get started right away, right on our documentation site, meraki.io. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Are there any new products of interest which have come up or you're, you're really excited about? I am really excited about uh, our SASE integrations. Um, so these are coming to, uh, these are coming to the MX platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we know when we think about the next, the next thing really, like the next stage of uh, network security development and posture enforcement, um, VPN is always going to hold some role in, in, the, in your average network. More and more often, uh, the application that the uh, customers, employees are interacting with are web-based, mm -hmm. right? They might be hosted in a private data center, but not always. And in fact, most of the time it's public cloud, right? So the dependence on being inside the VPN uh, of course is, is much less than, it, than it's been in the past. And so when we think about securing the web applications and actually enforcing posture across those clients, it's a different management paradigm, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we're really proud with the integrations that we have with Umbrella and other parts of the Cisco stack to make that uh, easy, to, easy to do, um, a holistic, intuitive experience. I would say that's one of the things I'm most excited mm -hmm. about when it comes yeah. to new features, yeah. So um, I've been looking around the Cisco Live DevNet zone and I saw a lot of MVSense cameras being put up here and there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I know in the past few years there have been a lot of use cases around MVSense with mm -hmm. you know maybe face mask detection or crowd yeah. detection. So anything new and exciting going on with the MV? Absolutely, so, uh, so Meraki MV, our camera platform, um, could not be more proud of the capabilities of this hardware. I mean, uh, we're talking about a camera with so much processing capability that you don't have to worry about uh, heavy video mm -hmm. processing infrastructure, uh, you know, a, a, a fat pipe to get all that video up to the cloud. You don't have to worry about spending all that money. We can do the processing on the camera, right? Mm -hmm. So we've been doing people detection, we've been doing uh, we've been doing vehicle detection, now desk detection, um, through some of our partners, things like mass detection, suspicious per person yeah. detection. Um, and the use cases, uh, we're, we're really excited about that. But one of the things that uh, we thought, how can we make this even more valuable? And we thought, well, there are going to be other use cases. Some of these are very unique to a very specific customer. Um, one customer and another will have slightly different concerns, of course. And, and, we, and we know that the existing features are, are, um, uh, are resonating with customers, but typically when you buy a, a camera platform, um, it kind of comes with the out-of-the-box capabilities, and what you see is what you get, right? It doesn't really ever get updated. Uh, it requires that MVR solution, and what it can do is what it can do until you, however many years later, upgrade the whole system. 
And that's never been a very user-friendly experience, right? The fact is that the, the hardware inside the MV cameras is very, very capable, mm -hmm. and we can extend that. So what we've done is we've built the ability for people who are uh, have custom needs mm -hmm. for specific, uh, completely custom detection of things like uh, custom objects, uh, noise, sirens, to actually build an ML model, a machine learning uh, computer vision model, and then deploy that directly on the cameras. Now, if you do this, then the cameras now can detect, without any additional hardware, the thing that you trained it specifically to be able to detect, right? So what I would like to see, and I know this doesn't exist yet, but what I would really like to see is, uh, you know, a CV model that tells me when, you know, uh, FedEx or UPS comes, right? You know, we can detect the vehicles, but to take that a step further, right? Um, let me know when the when the when, uh, when the USPS comes, that sort of thing. Um, and now it's actually possible, right? Develop the ML model, up upload this custom CV model to all of your cameras, and even if you already have deployed all your cameras, you can start realizing this additional value very trivially. And of course, all the capabilities of doing this upload, they're all API first. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do this in an automated fashion, it really is trivial to do. The hardest part might be developing the ML model, but that's where we have ecosystem partners who are actually developing those for many different use cases. Mm -hmm. So we want our customers to be able to do it, but if you're not ready to go down the machine learning path, then of course there's partners available to that. You can take those off the shelf solutions and then deploy those into the camera natively. So we're, we can't wait to see uh, new and exciting use cases that come out of that. Um, I'm still crossing my fingers, like I said, for the FedEx UPS thing. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um, but yeah, I would say, yeah, I would say custom CV models are really big. That's awesome. So where can customers or anyone who is interested in Meraki or building new things on it, where can they come and look for support or look for the peers who are doing this thing? Mm -hmm. or where is this all available? Well, we have a lot of resources available. I mentioned the documentation site before. Again, you don't need to log in or anything to get access to that. Um, we also have our community forums. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read, that's you can read without logging into anything, but we do hope that you'll actually create an account, join us, be part of the conversation. You can see what other people are talking about. There's different forums for you know, specific things like uh, MV cameras, and then there's another one for APIs. And um, we also have beta programs, early access programs uh, that are available, um, all mentioned on the community website. Uh, so you can opt in. And we also have a very new early access program uh, that has really just been announced today at Cisco Live, okay. where customers can opt themselves into these early access features. So if uh, in the past, for example, you might have to reach out to your account rep, right? And ask us, hey, I want to try this new feature. I want to try this, this thing that uh, might still be under development. Um, but with early access features, you can go and turn it on for yourself on your own organizations without any other interaction, right? And then turn it off, of course, if you're, you, know, you decide that you're not ready to fully adopt that feature. So we're really excited to see, I think we already had something like 7,000 different customers adopted in the first day. At this point, I'm sure it's, it's almost double that. Um, yeah, it's, been, it's just been really, really popular. Really thrilled to see that uh, engagement. Um, there are so many learning labs available to you online um, and webinars on a regular basis to get started with APIs. So if you have any, any concerns, nervousness, uh, you've never done any software development before, we really, really want to break down those barriers, right? I mean, this is, uh, it's a core part of Meraki's value proposition, uh, is making the product accessible. Um, and we're confident that our APIs uh, are just one more part of that story.